Since I know from experience that young people all understand English, yeah. I use this language for the time being. For the time being because I think it's maybe easiest for all of you to get me. We have heard from President Schultz, President Juncker, that Europe started as a peace project. And also today, Europe is still, first and foremost, a peace project. You may remember that 2012, the Union received the Nobel Peace Prize. So it remains also today the framework within which old adversities, old disputes, old conflicts are being channeled, sometimes also legalized, in order to solve them peacefully. And it may sound a little bit banal, but it's still extremely important to realize that Europe is not a goal by itself. Europe is rather a means to achieve more important goals. And these goals are peace, democracy, respect for the rule of law, human rights, including social rights, solidarity, mutual respect between people of different languages, cultures, religions, social backgrounds, but who respect one another as equal. People respecting one another as equal, irrespective of all what could divide them, race, ethnic origin, gender, sexual orientation, age, religion, nationality, and you can go on like this. People who respect them, one another, in the deepest sense of the word, considering one another equiv equivalent, equivalent, equal value, right? Equivalent, equal value people, they don't shoot on one another. They don't make war to one another. The consolidation of these values is key. I'm a lawyer, of course. As a judge, you wouldn't expect otherwise, right? And as a lawyer, an academic, professor in Leuven, I've engaged in the study of comparative constitutional law. That brought me to the United States of America, where I discovered the constitutional law structures of the US, balancing the power between the center in Washington and the component states all over the North American continent. And although the European Union is something very different from the United States of America, if only for the fact that we are not building one nation indivisible like the US are existing, we are based on a plurality of nations, like President Juncker just said, these nations will always remain pillar stones of the European Union. But all the same, the relation between separate states and a central level of governance, that is a stabilizing factor to make a whole continent work. And that's what I discovered there, and that's exactly what happens in the European Union. Because what is the European Union? It is not a state. It's not a federal state. It's not aspiring to becoming a state. It is a common level of governance dealing with subject matters which cannot effectively be dealt with at a mere national level. Clean water. Clean water cannot be obtained inside the territory of one particular state. The water flows wherever it flows, across state lines. Clean air, common good. Sustainable energy supply. If you build a nuclear plant in one member state, which is not secure, all the neighboring member states 
are equally threatened. President Juncker already said how tiny Europe is. Allow me to add another picture to his figures. Look tonight when you're back home at the globe. Look carefully at the Russian Federation. You will see that the European part of the Russian Federation from the Baltic borders, leaving out, of course, Belarus, Ukraine, I'm not speaking about Crimea now, from the north in Murmansk till the south, the Black Sea, to the east, you go over the border with Kazakhstan to the Ural Mountains. That is the European sense, the European part better, of the Russian Federation. You will see that you have there a land mass, a territory, which is roughly speaking the same than the whole European Union. The whole European Union, all states together, and with or without Brexit, huh? doesn't matter. Look at it, you will see it. I mean to say by that, it is a very small territory with all small states. The big member states are also small. All small territories, but very densely populated. So it is quite logical that this big space operates without internal frontiers. The borders are open. If you take your car here and you start driving northeast, you reach the Russian border in Estonia without having met a single border guard. It's an open space. That's Europe. Full free movement. People speaking other languages, having other histories, other religions or no religions, whatever. But they are people. Human beings of equal value, that's Europe. We respect them, mutual respect. We live in solidarity with all of them. That is a spirit, it's a state of mind. It's not a state in the legal sense. Europe is a state of mind. This institution, the Court of Justice, reflects that. We are composed of judges, one from every state and in the general court even two of every state in the years to come. We talk to one another as equals. We listen to one another as equals. All standpoints are just as respectable, whether you come from a big or a small member state, whether you are a judge having a particular professional background or another professional background. We are equals, people of equal value. So we breathe Europe in its deepest sense here inside the um, Court of Justice. And that is how we come to solutions which are to judicial decisions which are relevant and operationalized in all the national legal orders, in all the national systems. Because all the member states, all the peoples of Europe are strictly equal before the treaties before union law. That's what we have in common. So it's a common level of governance, acting in all the fields which member states cannot meaningfully deal with separately in that scattered territory over the European Union. I mean, scattered because of all these small states in a small territory. So they must act in common for the environment, for the protection of consumers, for the mobility of students, for the energy supply provisions, for the asylum and immigration, because when, once you are out over an external border, you are in the whole space, which is a common space, and which needs to be a common space for people normally to live. For you, in your generation, it is absolutely self-evident that the space is open. You can't even imagine otherwise. Well, when I was your age, when I went to France, to France, eh, between Belgium and France, there were border controls, customs checks, etc. So you can't imagine. The fact that it is now otherwise is the European Union, and that's a plain example. What you eat in your plate 
you say, well, that's food. It should be healthy and safe, right? Yes, but it can come from everywhere. Who is to guarantee that the food is healthy and safe? Therefore, you need common rules so that you have the free movement. So even if you don't move, you stay just at home, you are confronted to Europe because using the internet, eating healthy food, consuming all sorts of products and services, they have come from everywhere and they are in your personal sphere. I think that is really the reason why I believe in Europe. It's a project uniting peoples with full respect for their diversity. And as you know, it were youngsters in schools who proposed the motto of the European Union, united in diversity. And that's exactly what it is. We all feel our own nationality. So our identity is multiple. We are German, we are Belgian, we are Flemish or Walloon. We are French, Danish, Italian, of the North or the South. Luxembourg. Perfect, Luxembourgish. Eh? Du Sud, as we heard. Eh? That's all perfect. But it combines smoothly and automatically with that other dimension that we all belong to a single destiny on the European continent. So I think the European Union for young people should be seen as an automatic dimension of their own identity. And staying here, I make a last reflection, which is also uh, aimed at the teachers here in the room who are accompanying these young people. And I say it also as a father of a rather numerous family. I think that educators have also an enormous responsibility to uphold in their educational projects uh, with the pupils the values on which the union is based. Peace, mutual respect between peoples of different creeds, races, nationalities, gender and other di divisions to say all people, just by being a human being, are fundamentally equal and worthy of respect. To bring over these values and attitudes of openness, tolerance, equality, mutual respect, solidarity. And not only to teach the European Union as a rational thing, that's the Commission, that's the Parliament, that's the court, and you know, something which is rather boring to learn by heart, knowing what are the institutions of the Union. That, frankly speaking, is the lesser important part of the whole story. What's the important part is the substance of European integration that is basically how people behave and live with one another in a single small space on the globe, which is uh, Europe. It's a matter of value teaching, of skills, critical thinking, and active participation for a project. It's a project, it's not only an institutional process. And the project, that's really the future. That you believe in something which is your future, that you behave in an un uncomplexified way with your equals in all the countries of Europe. I wish you good luck at it. <laughs>